So has it happened to you that you missed the deadline, but your process was fine, you were almost done. You just should have done the same things faster. So this video is about the ways that people advertise Vim to us. And I'm gonna demonstrate in the end how, what I think the value of Vim is by demonstrating how I've used Vi for little warm-ups and exercises. So, this is a bit of a trauma that we are slow. And another one is that we are not cool. You know, people just don't pay attention to us. We're different. We're different. People pay attention when we have new shoes or we use a weird tool. And if that's all there is to it, then I need some more of that. A third kind of trauma we have is the editor just doesn't listen. It does random things with, that it didn't do yesterday and it just acts different from day to day and like, am I not supposed to be the ruler of that thing? Is that thing not supposed to serve me? Like, I need the power of customization. <laughs> and I'll get to why you can probably guess what I think about the root cause of these problems. And I'm going to get into it, but first, isn't this a good opportunity for a predator? Because, like, yes. Yes, you are slow. But you can come to my basement and you will find Vim. Hit Vim. And Vim will make you. Did you watch anime? It will make you. That disgusting phrase that I hate hearing over and over again because I don't watch anime. I don't watch anime. What does it even mean? Here's the thing, alright? We are slow because the process was wrong. You didn't have to debug in the end, and you didn't really have to throw away code because of miscommunication. Well, there are other reasons to throw code instead. Also, this is my... Uh, I'm in university. My only experiences are from the university, and we like throw a lot of code because two people wrote the same thing because they didn't communicate properly. As regards to being cool, I'm terrible at communicating, but still, even just trying to communicate makes me cool. Way more so than what I use. Actually, people, I've made a whole video on this, how people never care about what I use. They see these arcane tools, but they don't ask, they don't aspire, definitely. Vim is customizable. But for one, I'm not convinced that it's more customizable than other editors. And also, I'm not sure that this is the reason. I'm not sure that being able to customize something solves the problem of being out of control with it. But you've already experienced what it's like to try to overcome these fundamental issues, haven't you? And you like... I'm gonna communicate better with my peers. So you like throw some ideas. And what happens then? People start fighting over who has the most skill issues. Or you ask for help. So that you familiarize more with the tool. And people do give you help, but the help is more like a bombardment. And you're like, I'm not doing that again. Or you try a different process of writing code so that you don't debug in the end. So you try a different process and first of all that slows you down and of course it will slow you down. It will make you worse temporarily. But also, now your peers can't follow you anymore. So we're being punished for trying to improve. And we're kind of locked to having our issues. And maybe that's why we, come, we go for Vim. And by the way, I didn't put this disclaimer on time, but I don't think people who advertise Vim are bad people, but the whole system that makes one follow the other person, the way that the virus multiplies, I think it's a very manipulative system. 
So I went to illustration. I didn't. I I got to illustration. I'm not into illustration anymore, but I should have reset this anyway. This thing. When was I introduced to this thing? This arcane, weird nonsense. I was introduced to it a week in. Uh, it didn't take long at all. When were you introduced to the equivalent of this for programming? A week in? What were you like shown a week in? Uh, that's a bit of a problem. And they talk about it all the time. A lot of people just don't listen. And I hope I can give some insight. Well, here, if I go a little back, this is Robert Martin. And I love Robert Martin, all right? And pay attention to this code. This code. If you pause and ponder, this code is cursed. And we can see Robert, this is Robert Martin. We can also see Ken Beck do something similar. And basically he has, this is part two of three, half the video. So he's not done with what he's making, but here it says working. So yeah, he values, he and Robert Martin value working code more than code that theoretically should have run. And I would claim that these two videos are very equivalent to that one, but for programming. And we are just locked out of it. Even if we find videos like this, the process of absorbing this knowledge is painful. Like we are pretty much locked out of it. And here's where I think that Vim comes to play, because so far I think that this video could have been about other things instead of Vim, anything that is being called blazingly fast could fit in this video so long, but Vim has some special properties. I would like to start with who made it? Actually, who made Vi? Vi was made and used by people who actually didn't have the same issues as us. They seem to have all kinds of problems, but they weren't blocked from learning. So this might be of interest to us. How long has this video dragged on for? Screw me. These people were allowed to evolve. So we may be curious what were their text editors like? What values did they embody? Is Vim actually about speed being cool and being customizable? And if so, then what were its roots like? I think the roots are more important. I spoiled it. I spoiled it. All right. Uh, yes, exec dash. This is what there is in there. By, I'm gonna edit a kind of temporary file. If you're not familiar with Vim, I inserts. More here, escape. Have you heard of JJKK? Yes, well. You can also do this. I'll name it A, double quote A. And now we can either paste it, which is uh, like one thing that you can do, but also you can execute it. So at A. That's the JJ, right? JJ at A. Same thing. So this is one of the two tools that Vi has. This is Vi. Another thing that Vi has is the shell integration with bang bang. This is one of the two things, by the way. NeoVim butchered the other. Vim butchered something else. Like, NeoVim is more like the things that you add to it. Anyway. LS, LS is like a shell command, and indeed you can do like shell commands. So 
I'm gonna write one. Bang bang. Uh, find dot pipe. Uh, <laughs> this is a bad idea from like many standpoints. Uh, said substitute beginning with that thing. And I'm pretty sure that this is how Vim was supposed to be used. Let me open another line and now I can go like at L. No! Okay. That's true, that's true. What did I do? I can do that. And now I can use these as macros because, yeah, that works. I can go like, oops, I can go like that, like, this is something that I can do. True, 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 I should have saved. So I'm gonna copy that, oh. I'm gonna copy that as A. I'm gonna copy, I guess, that one as B. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna save at A. B, A, T, A, B. And this is Vi. You have the shell integration and the like terminal things, and you have more shell integration than that. You have that thing, which, which is pretty nice. It can do anything. Check that out. Look at it. Look at it. I love it. And can you tell what sort of values this has? It's kind of a completely different set of values, it's not super fast. I don't think there is a faster way to switch between files than this one. I mean, yeah, there kind of is, but... You know. This is the most modern-like thing that I could scrap together. And I don't know what was the legitimate old-school way of doing it. But I hope it gives a glimpse of what could have been there, more like what Vim actually has to say about those who advertise it. This is like Vim's parent, this is like NeoVim's grandparent. And if Vi saw those people who say NeoVim will make you blazingly fast and cool. This is what it would have to say, like, I'm not designed to be fast or cool or anything. Or maybe it was for its standard, for the standard of its time, but today we mean something quite different when we say fast and cool. It would be like, I'm not designed to do what you think I'm designed to do, fundamentally. And I think that so long as we realize what's the problem, Then we can just go on using our editors. Or if we learn Vim, we learn it for a more deliberate reason. I don't like it when I'm scammed into trying something out. <sighs> this is like a remake of an old video. It was one of my first videos. It got extremely popular and I don't like it. So I'm not sure what to do with it. I suppose I'll leave a link to it in the description. I've hidden it for now. Maybe I will unhide it, but... I don't want people to be introduced to me through that video. I just don't like it. <laughs> I didn't randomly get popular. I made it popular kind of... manually. But that's a story for another day. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> I'm recording you over here and over there at the same time. Well, this deserves another take. Goodbye.